Hi, this is J.P. Morgan. Today's Slanted Lens lesson, we're here on Wall Street in New York City. We've got Jay White with me, great looking guy. We're going to do some corporate looking portraits of him with Wall Street in the background. Now as we do these portraits, we're going to do them with grid spots. We're going to look at the area of coverage for each of the different grids. We're going to look at how to pan the grids right and left in order to flag the light on the body and on the face. We're then going to put a warm gel on our light. That allows us to dial the color down, giving us a blue background. So let's get started and see what we can do. A grid is a honeycomb insert that you insert into the front of a 9 inch reflector. Its purpose is to cut the area of coverage. There's really no softener that's added to the reflector, it's just the grid and then the hard light source coming from the reflector. To be effective with grids, one really needs to understand the area of coverage for each of the different sizes. I'm going to set the camera up 8 feet from the wall and do a shot with each of the different size grids so we can look at the area of coverage and see how it affects the light pattern. Here's a shot of our talent with a grid that is set 8 feet from the wall. It's easily a 10 foot area of coverage. You know the area of coverage will lessen as you move this light closer to the subject, but when you set up 8 feet from the wall, you're going to get about 10 feet. Now the area coverage is distinct, you really see the circle, but the grid is filling in the shadows. When a grid is this large, the reflector sides are going to bounce through it and start to fill the shadows. Here's a shot of our talent now with a 30 degree grid. Again, the grid is 8 feet from the wall. The area coverage is cut to about 8 feet. The lights become a little more narrow, but still bouncing around so you see a lot of openness in the shadows. Here's a shot of our talent with a 20 degree grid now. Still 8 feet from the wall. The area of coverage is cut to under 6 feet. This grid is not bouncing too much light around in the shadow areas, so it's starting to be a little darker outside of that circle of coverage. Here's a 10 degree grid, again 8 feet from the wall. It's a very focused, distinct light has quick fall off, it almost feels like a spotlight. I am going to use a 20 degree grid for the shots we're going to do today. I want the image to be dramatic, so the tighter the light pattern, that's gonna help me achieve that look. We're going to hang our Dynalite 800 pack on the stand. There's a clamp that Dynalite makes that will hang this power pack on the stand. To power the power pack, we're going to use a battery power source that Dynalite is going to release in December. This is a great lightweight power supply that works extremely well. We used it all day and it was very effective. You know, in New York, you don't need a permit. If you're not tethered to anything, that means if your camera's not tethered to a laptop or your power packs aren't running electrical cords to a generator or something, you can shoot just about anywhere without a permit. So today we're gonna to put everything together with one stand for the assistant with the light source and the camera in my hand. We're gonna run around down to Wall Street and get some pictures. Let's take a look at our lighting setup. This is our image with only the ambient light of the day. It's an overcast day, so the soft light's going to look very nice in the background. I'm going to add my 20 degree grid for this first shot on the camera left side, and it'll just light his face. Here's our look. The light has a tight enough area of coverage to give a really moody look to the image. The grid is a little out of place in the shot though. It's too far forward and calls too much attention to itself on the wall. I'm going to feather it away from the camera and cut some of the light off from the column on the right side of the frame. I'll be feathering the light all day to keep even that small area of coverage under control. A lot of the time, I'm not using the middle of that area of coverage, but one edge, one side, top or bottom. The day is gloomy, so I'm going to take advantage of that blue light in the background. I'm putting a Roscoe CTO gel over the grid. I do this often, so it's hardly worth mentioning, but it really looks nice when you have kind of a gloomy, overcast day. Here's our result after we change the color temperature to 3800 degrees. Here's some of the images from this first setup. You know, we're very mobile because of our setup, so we're gonna get out into the street and start walking around and see what we can get. In this image, his hands were very bright when we first set up. Again, we feathered the light up to allow that circle of coverage to kind of fall out into the sky. We're going to use that circle of coverage to light just his face and let the lighting fall off on his body and hands.
It's interesting because two people can set a light in the very same position, say a Rembrandt position, but you look at their images and they get very different results. The reason is feathering the light. If you aim the light directly at the person every time, you get the exact same look. If you feather the light right or left, up or down, it changes the look drastically. So play with that thought of feathering the light, using the edge of the area of coverage and not just the center gives a much different look. We're going to take our image into Nick software and see if we can enhance it just a little bit. We're going to push our brightness up to about 3%. Let's pull our saturation down to about a minus 42%. Let's push the contrast up. So we're going to be up to about a 38%. That'll give us a nice contrast. Let's now go to the local contrast and push that up to about 40%, maybe even 42 as we look at what it's going to do. I like the way this has enhanced this image. Now let's go to the image as we apply this effect. First we'll go in and fill the whole image. Then I'm going to go in with my brush. I'm going to hit erase. And then I'm going to go in and just erase the effect slightly on his face. So it warms it up just a little bit. With that, we'll apply it, and there's our final image. Here's some of our final images that we shot here on Wall Street. You know, we've had a great day today. We've learned a lot about grids, how to use them, how to feather them. It's important to use a grid and understand there's a circle of coverage. Use the area within that circle that'll best light your subject and keep the rest of the light off from the scene. Every time I do a lesson where I stop and look at a basic principle of photography, I learn something. So let's go out there and use grids and keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. We're very excited about this last year here at the Slanted Lands and to celebrate, we're going to give away a Glidecam 2000 to one of our lucky viewers. All you've got to do, go to the Slanted Lens, theslantedlens.com, fill out the form. You can apply two or three different ways. You've got to apply before the 30th of December and we will select one of our viewers to win a Glidecam 2000. You've seen this in all of our videos, great piece of equipment, don't miss out. You know, I do want to mention a new sponsor that we have. It solves a problem that we have had so many times when we shoot on location these days. Used to be when I would fly out to a location, I would roll up to the curb, I'd throw 30 cases on the curb, give the sky cap 100 or 150 dollars, he'd throw them all on the airplane. Man, those days are so gone now, so I'm always trying to decide, what do I ship? What do I try to rent there? Is there a place to rent it there? All those things are solved with this new client, our new sponsor, Lens Pro to Go. Lens Pro to Go is a company that takes your order either with a phone app or with a uh, online and you get all of your equipment shipped exactly to where you're working. It's really a great service because when you're done, you stick a label on it, you ship it back to them. It solves so many logistical issues. And when you're done, you're ready to go. It's dead. I think we can rebuild it.